you have statistically seven seconds online to capture someone's attention. And in that time, they're going to decide if they're going to click away or if they're going to stay and keep reading. Hello and welcome to episode 205 of the Smart Agents Podcast. As always, my name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. On today's episode, we are joined by Ryan Hulk, founder of The Steal Your Story. As a brand messaging strategist and marketing expert, Ryan specializes in helping brands identify their unique story and simplify their messaging to better resonate with potential customers, both online and off. Throughout our conversation, we're focusing on his tips for building a website that engages your audience while still being search engine friendly. From his eight things all small business websites must have to his three steps for auditing your website's message clarity, Ryan shares a ton of actionable items that you can take to either revamp your personal website or start one from scratch. But before we get on to the day's featured interview, if you or someone else on your team has an incredible story of real estate success or tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. We're always on the lookout for new guests to inspire our listeners. And lastly, if you enjoyed this conversation and want to hear more, be sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents Podcast. We stream on all major podcasting platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube. All right, let's get on to our conversation with Ryan Hulk. If you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out his website, distillyourstory.com. All right, so really the way I like to uh, start everything out is if you could just introduce yourself to us a little bit, uh, you know, where you're at in the uh, the country and, you know, a bit of your background. Yeah, so my name is Ryan Hulk, and I am in California, actually the center of California. We are about four hours north of L.A., three hours from San Francisco, Like if you look at that map of California and you put your finger in the center, you're pretty much going to touch within a few mile radius of the community that I grew up in. Uh, And I grew up in this area, moved away for work and came back when we decided to start a family. But what I do is I started in the nonprofit sector and I learned in the nonprofit sector that there was an important way to build relationships with people. And that was to tell stories about the work you were doing. And what I realized was that that principle carried into small businesses really well, that when we could tell a story well, when we could talk about our business relationally, it didn't feel slimy like marketing. And so I help businesses figure out how do you share your story clearly and how do you share it in ways that engage people so you're, you are Uh, memorable? And then how do you put those words on a website so that clients can find you and know that there's already a connection with you before you ever actually shake a hand with them? Right. Absolutely. And, you know, before we really kind of dive into how this, uh, you know, and some of your tips uh, specifically for our real estate audience, I just have to ask, you know, how have you seen, um, you know, web content and, you know, the SEO world, how, how has that evolved over the years to where this has become such an important piece of, you know, somebody's marketing efforts? Yeah. So when I started in marketing like 20 years ago, print was the thing, you know, it was how many flyers and how many door drops and how many, you know, times could you put a mailer in a mailbox? And I actually see that still working, at least in our community for a lot of, of people in the real estate market. But the, the first really point of contact, the front door of your business is a website presence because so many people are sitting on the couch late at night and they're scrolling social and they're like, oh, I was, I forgot to look for that house listing. I'm, you know, Saturday is free. Maybe it's the day we should go look for something. And so really the website has become a place where people can glean information quickly about who you are without having to pick up the phone, without having to, you know, have an email chain that goes back and forth and waits three days. Um, And so in a lot of ways, it is your digital handshake, that first point of contact. So when you can tell your story well online and you can make that relational contact, it makes a huge difference for you as a business owner. Yeah. So, uh, you know, shifting over to our real estate audience. Uh, We were talking just offline uh, real quickly about how, you know, even when I go and search uh, some of the real estate agents that, you know, we might be having on the show here, we work with in other uh, aspects of our business, you go on a website and all there is, is their name. There's no picture. There's, There's really nothing there. 
and I just, I, I know that you have that same, uh, you've had that same experience. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. We, we bought this house, uh, that we're, we live in now, uh, six years ago and we used an agent that we already knew, uh, that we had worked with before and her team. But what we found in the process of looking was that we were look we were looking for a house about 15 miles from the area we lived in. So we generally knew the community, but we didn't know the streets and the intersections and who to talk to. And, you know, if we were going to go looking for a open house, like I want to see the face of who's going to be there when I show up <laughs> kind of thing. And so it was a gap that I noticed was I can't find any more information than maybe the person's name. And that might not be the person, you know, who actually sit the open house when you get there. Right. And so it becomes a visual way to connect the dots when you can have a web presence that's, you know, they're doing more than just a digital business card. Right. Absolutely. And I know, you know, for a lot of real estate agents, they might be provided with, uh, you know, like a, a web page or a website through their broker. Um, right. First, how important is it to really fill that out, but then also maybe go beyond that and build your own site as well? So I think it's really important that you have a listing at wherever you are connected, that if you're with a team, you're with a brokerage, you're, that there is something there. Uh, in the same way that someone in the, the securities and investments world has a listing page that says, this person is credible, they're actually with us. And if for nothing more, that's part of what that does for you. Having your own presence allows you to tell about your unique story. What specific niche are you selling real estate for? Our area has lots of ag. We have ag only realtors and real estate professionals. We have land only people, you know, who are, who are not doing commercial, they're doing ag and they're doing, um, the radio ads in our area are very unique for people in the real estate market because of that. When you have your own web presence, it allows you, even if you only have a couple pages, to tell this is where our specialty is. This is what makes me stand out. This is how my business is different than Joe and Nancy down the street who might be great to you know, do this area of real estate, but not so much this area. And it's the way that you can really identify who is that audience that you're, you love serving and that you can best serve. And the other cool thing is if you have your own site, even a small couple pages, and you have a listing at your brokerage, right? Google with their most recent updates has said they are interested in connecting the dots for people, meaning they want to know that this person who is represented on this website is the same person represented on this other website. And they're, they're looking at all these points of data and trying to figure out how do I connect the dots? What are the six degrees of Kevin Bacon that put all these people together? Okay. And so when you can have both of those, then Google assumes that you have a higher level of authority because they see you are at an established business, but then they see that you also have a personal presence. And when they can make those connections, then all of a sudden you begin to look higher in the Google rankings, which means your ability in search to show up mm -hmm. can increase depending on you know how effective you've been in telling your story. But it's so it's not just a practical application for users. It's also one that has a technical application as well. Right. Absolutely. So uh, let's say, you know, for those people that have, um, you know, they've already, they started their own website uh, or maybe the ones that are listening to this and be like, okay, you know, now's, now's the push. I'm actually, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and start building my website out. Uh, kind of walk me through some of the things uh, that people can do to, you know, audit their website or kind of start figuring out what to start filling that website with. You bet. So uh, I think of a website audit in terms of three specific things. The very first thing is how clear is my message in my introduction? You have statistically seven seconds online to capture someone's attention. And in that time, they're going to decide if they're going to click away or if they're going to stay and keep reading. And so the prime real estate for your website the is that top section that loads when the page first loads before you've ever scrolled. 
And in that section, you have the opportunity to, in really one or two sentences, to say who you are, who you serve, and you know what, what that niche is, and how you can be contacted or connected with next. Mm-hmm. And what I see some people do is they're like, oh, that's amazing. I'm going to put three paragraphs of information there. The unfortunate thing is 95% of people will never read that. You and your nearest family members are the ones who are probably going to look at it. And most people are going to read a couple words and skip on or click away. So you've got to really be intentional in that initial message that it is super clear. You know, who are you? Who do you serve? You know, and how do they engage with you in the next step? After that, I like to have a section that I kind of dive into a little bit of a, a cross reference of information being, I want to lean into the fact that I've got some experience in this audience and the specific type of niche that I'm serving. So if it's real, if it's commercial real estate, if it's land acquisition, if it's ag, you know, that you you let the person know by the language you're using and how you're speaking that this is the exact area you serve in that you're best able to serve in. And if there's a niche within that, like I help people with land acquisitions who have these kind of problems, that's a great way to let people know, Hey, this is, I'm in the right place. This person understands me. They, they obviously have experience doing work that is similar to the kind of problem that I've got. I call that section the is it for me section because I want the reader to self-identify by the words that are being shared and the story you've used. Hey, okay, I get it. This is for me. I should probably click the uh, schedule a call or call now option for the person. Right. And so when, uh, you know, for, for our folks, um, you know, listening to this, that, that call to action that, you know, schedule that call, how, um, how often should that be showing up on your page? (laughs) And and kind of what are some of the easiest ways to actually make sure that people do indeed contact you? So I I love this question because most people hate my answer. Um, And so the, the reality is this, that there is a, think about how you engage when you go to a website. You're scrolling quickly, you're reading headlines, and you just keep thumbing down, especially if you're on your phone. You're just swipe, 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 swipe. Most people, unless something caught your eye and you happen to just zoom by, don't scroll back up mm-hmm. when, it, it, when it's not social media. They don't scroll back up. So because of that, your website needs to have your call to action, whether that's a button or it's a pop-up, or it's some way that people can connect with you. That happens within every couple sections or every couple scrolls. And you can get creative with it. Like if, if at the top in your menu, it says book a call or call me today or see, you know, see me in the office kind of thing. Those, those are great. As long as the next step is consistent that that what they're going to experience is the same. So if, if they click contact, they know what contact means. If they click book a call or some version of that throughout, it doesn't have to be the same two words every time, but it needs to be indicative of that action you want people to take. But I would put it there. I mean, I've heard people say as many as seven to nine times. My copywriter friends hate that. They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, this is not about legibility, this is about usability. And I understand how people are going to act. So if you think you've got too many, you're probably right on the edge of not having enough. Right. Absolutely. And it's even for us, you know, when we build uh, sales pages or registration pages Mm -hmm. for different things, I mean, we almost, we're putting that call to action button, um, you know, every couple seconds when you scroll, but really anytime, um, you know, maybe the design or the colors or something changes on that page, it's going to be there as well. Yep. If I do, um, I like to do color bands because I know people visually track down a page and you asked about audit. The other thing that I look at for audits is, are my headlines super clear that if those are all I read, I would understand enough of this business to maybe act. So I will do a section that's, you know, got a light gray background or a light colored background. 
and then a white section and then another gray section. And if I have done two sections without a call to action, I know I'm in trouble. I've gotten too far down in the scroll and I need to put a button in one of those to make sure someone has an opportunity to take an action. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned the headlines there, and that's something that I want to uh, touch on as well, because I think, um, you know, sometimes people uh, that maybe, you know, that aren't copywriters or mm -hmm. marketers necessarily, um, you know, they, they, they'll they think, okay, I have the headline there, but I have all this other space that I can fill with paragraph after paragraph of, of words. But you've said it a couple of times, you know, all those paragraphs, a lot of people aren't going to read that. They're going to scroll the headlines. So you almost need to tell your story in those headlines. Yeah. I actually encourage people if they're really, if they have a website and they're wanting to figure out, am I, is there a gap here in what I'm communicating is I will ask them to open their website in one window and open a Google doc in the other and go down the page and only copy Copy the headlines, paste it into the Google Doc for everything on your home page. You really could do it with any page, but the home page is the place I see the most challenge. And then look at your Google Doc and only read what's there. Don't read anything else. And tell me, do I know who you are? Do I know who you serve? Do I know how they're going to benefit from your service? Uh, do I know what the next step should be? And if that's not clear, then you probably need to go back and figure out, is there a way that I can rework the, the lines in my headline to be more clear? So if that's all people read, they know they should probably find a button someplace on this page and, and click it. Yeah, I, I love that exercise because that is something that is so easy to do. And it takes just a couple of minutes. Yeah. Uh, and it really, I think a lot of people will be uh, really eye-opening experience for them. It It is. And I went back and did it on some of my own content recently. And I thought what I had communicated clearly, I had missed the mark on a couple of things. And I write copy for websites all the time. And the reason that I had missed it was because we had gone in and gone, oh, I need to update section three with some new information. And I hadn't thought about if I update this, it affects how that tree Re, you know how how the headlines read down the page because that one that section's more clear, but the headline now is disjointed. For, so if they only read the headlines, I may have lost a reader. Right. Um, you know, we, earlier you mentioned um, you know really kind of uh, finding that you know the the storytelling aspect mm -hmm. to to tell it you know to getting your messaging out there. Um, you know, so beyond beyond the headlines and things like that, how can you really kind of what are some of your tips for, um, you know, building, uh, creating those relatable stories within your your website copy to kind of resonate with your intended audience? So one of the, the best places that I find for the story is in an area where you talk about your experience or your authority, how long you've been in this business, who you love to serve. It is an opportunity because that section is already a little bit about you or all about you, mm -hmm. but you don't want people to disconnect and go, oh, this is just a boring bio. And so what I encourage people to do is to think about how could you tell your how could you tell your biography in a creative way that engages people? And if you can tell it in a story, like I've got a friend who is in the fundraising um area. And one of the things he does is he helps ag people with real estate figure out how to, to make donations. And what he learned was he could tell a story about as a kid going out on the farm with his dad or his grandpa rather, and what that experience was like and turn that story to be because of this, this is why I do the work I do. And if you can find a story kind of like that in your own life, like why did you end up in real estate? Was there, was there a, a pivotal moment when you said, this is what I want to do? Did you have some experience where you went, I don't want anyone else to have that experience? You know, um, was there some joyful moment? Did someone challenge you to do something different with your life? And this is what you ended up with. Those stories may not seem like highlights to you, but they make you personal and they make you memorable in a way that other people can relate with you at some level, whether that's been their experience or not. So I encourage people, if there's nowhere else that you're going to 
be really personal and really tell a story that connects emotionally with people. A great way to do that is in that section where you feel like I'm going to share a little of my bio anyways. Tell us why you're doing this. Tell us you know, what got you into it. And that's definitely something that's never going to show up at the broker page. There's never a place for that. Um, I mean, it's just that's not what that page is for. And that's a, a reason why, hey, I, I can talk about this on my own site and I can connect it to the heart of what I do. Right. Absolutely. And I, I love that. Um, you know, I think for anybody in real estate, whether or not it was, you know, I've talked to so many people that, you know, maybe they, if real estate was something that they were absolutely, you know, enthralled with when they were younger, loved, you know, maybe going to an open house with their, yeah. with their parents, or maybe there's somebody that just wanted a career change, but they are selling real estate in a neighborhood that they're raising their family and all yes. you can tell those stories and somebody's going to relate to it. I mean, I, yeah. I relocated. And, you know, there was a reason we, we moved to where we did. And yeah. if I connect with an agent that is telling that same story of why they, you know, why they love selling exactly. homes in that area, I'm going to connect with them. We have owned three homes in this general community. Um, the first home we bought uh, using an agent who was a family friend. The next one we bought from his son because the, the father had retired and the next one we bought from some, this house we bought from somebody on their team. And each of those happened because we made a connection that went deeper than the transaction. And it became relational. And they told us a bit of their story of why we do real estate. Real estate allows us to do these things in our community, to make these kind of relationships. And that for us made the difference. And if you can find a way to do that, it it's a powerful way to keep people engaged. And obviously in our case, we bought three houses. They, they made a little bit of money in the last 20 years over the fact that they made that relational connection and, and the equity was there relationally. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, for most agents that I, that I talk to, um, you know, they, they really do have a passion for the communities that mm -hmm. they are selling homes in. So it, it's, it should be very easy to be able to yeah. uh, create those stories on their website. Yeah, very much so. And I would encourage people, if they're thinking of those stories, document that story, write it down and go give it to a friend and let them look at it. Because one of the, one of the, the challenges that I see is we can get in our heads about a story because we're like, I need all the details about you know, rather than in four sentences, I could tell you uh, just enough that if you're interested, you're going to ask me about it at an open house. You're going to ask me in person. You're going to, you know, feel like there's a connection. Um, so sometimes it's, you know, get a first draft down and go hand it to somebody who you trust and just say, hey, do you feel like this tells my story well? Do you think this would work well on my website? Yeah. So you know, when you're putting that story together, the, the actual, the text of it, um, you know, I, I know a lot of times and people hear, oh, you got to pack things full of these keywords. And sometimes people, you know, will, they go overboard and it really kind of bogs down that story yeah. or just makes it so disjointed. So uh, what what's some of your tips for, uh, you know, still getting that, you know, the SEO juice while coming across relatable and natural? So I like to think of it as one page, one topic, one or two keywords. Okay? So um, for a long time, it, there was this put as many keywords in, put as many keywords in. And Google didn't love that because the it didn't read well. The quality of content wasn't great. You could tell people were trying to cheat. Um, and so I started thinking about if this is the homepage of my site, it's where people, 90% of the people are going to come if they type straight in. What is the big idea topic? Um, and then what is the one or two keywords I would like to be known for? And let's make sure that those phrases exist in the headlines and in the body copy multiple times. So if you are doing ag real estate, as I've used as an example already, mm -hmm. I want to make sure ag real estate is that keyword and that I talk about ag and it may not always be the phrase ag real estate, but it may be real estate in the ag business. It may be, you know, variations on that, but it still is about the one 
keyword phrase or big idea so that it's repeated. Um, and I want to make sure that's tagged a bunch of times. And then you may have something about, you know, the community you live in. So there's the connection between this service in this community. Uh, but, and then I would look at your next page and go on your about us page, you know, where you tell maybe a little longer version of your story and I'm connected to this brokerage and we do these kind of things. And, you know, what keyword is most important there? Is it the brokerage? Is it the details about you? Is it something in your story that you feel like is most important? But it can't be the same keyword as the first page. You want to make sure you are diversifying your keywords so you aren't trying to keyword stack because Google in their recent, uh, their recent publication really said, we don't want to see four pages on your site that all have the same keyword associated with them. We want to show that you've got diversity of ideas or thoughts. So it's all about you and you can take different angles, but you just can't always say, you know, ag real estate, ag real estate, ag, you know, four times, you know, ag real estate in California, ag real estate in California, you got to find some variations on it. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think that, you know, bodes well for real estate because, you know, a lot of agents, you know, in our area, we have the, where I'm at in Florida, we have the the coastal communities, but mm -hmm. then we also have the inland more rural. And yeah. so breaking that up among different pages is, is very nice. Cause I know a lot of people are like, well, how do I get across that? I, I cover such a wide area. Yeah. And I would, I would think about that. Um, the, the way I would think about that is almost like a restaurant or a chain of rest that has locations in different places where there's the one main page that talks about, you know, let's just say PF Chang's. Okay. <laughs> Here's PF Chang's. Okay. There's PF Chang's in, in Fresno, the community I'm in, there's one in Sacramento, there's one in, you know, all over the U S and, but it's, it all falls under one. And then in a menu, it's got some of those sub items. And it's a great way if you do serve multiple specialties within real estate to have a page for each specialty, which allows you to have a keyword connected with that specific uh, specialty. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think it's really interesting how, um, you know, you, hearing about how Google has, you know, really kind of changed mm -hmm. the way they've wanted to, you know, not diversifying your content and it's in the same thing uh in the video production space and youtube and even you know your social media content people are not you you don't now people are saying you know don't don't pack as much information as you possibly can into something break it out into smaller yes. bite-sized pieces yeah and i like to think of it in terms of you know how if could they repeat this if they heard it twice maybe three times could they repeat it so if you think of it in that way, it's got to be a small phrase or a small, it may be a longer section, but it's a small idea that is reinforced so that people go, you know, they read that, oh, okay, here's the big idea of that section. They want me to walk away with this idea, this, you know, this kind of goal. And Google is thinking that way. And honestly, have you ever gone to a website when you weren't researching a paper for school? and read every word and thought, I get it. I will now go forth and share this information. Probably not. That's just, that's just not how most of us read content anymore. Um, and so if we can think in bite-sized pieces, you know, in, in packaging of story ideas or sections of your site, just to help people, you know, kind of content block down through a site, it can help tremendously with keeping them longer because statistically, the longer they stay on your site, the more apt they are to click a button and take an action because they're feeling more connected to what you're sharing. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things that I, I noticed uh, on your, your profile and when we were setting this interview up um, is your eight essentials for small uh, business websites. And I, I love, you know, honestly, I love lists and what they do for our audience. So I'd love for you to kind of run through those, uh, those eight essentials. Yeah. So uh, there are eight things that every business needs to have on their website. Some of them exist on the homepage. Others exist in some of the interior pages. But the eight, the eight things at a high level um, that the opening section, the top, what's called the hero section, has got to have your image. It's got to talk about who your audience is and the solution you provide. 
um, that you then have a section. I mentioned it before the, is this for me section where you really lean into, you know, that the audience you're writing for understands they're in the right place. Um, and the type of problem that you solve, you know, whether it's real estate or, or whatever that is, that you have a section where you clearly identify the benefits of working with you specifically, like what does this experience bring the end user and how do you make life better? Um, another section where you talk about that authority and you as how long you've been doing this, why you're doing it, you know, you, you hint at your story. I like to hint at the story on the homepage and then have an about us, you know, that it actually takes three paragraphs or something. So, so there's like, if you want to read more, you could click and go to the about us section for the people who really want to dive in and make sure they're in the right place. Um, I love to have a section where your offers are clearly uh, articulated. Now in the real estate space, in the small business space, that's often we have these three widgets, we have these three products or services, these consulting, whatever. In the real estate space, that might be that, you know, your here are the three specialties you have and how you could you could go deeper, you know, onto one of those subsections that's keyworded or something like that. Um, I love to have a section then that has what I call social proof, which is give me a testimony, give me a video. Give me something that says you actually know what you're doing. Uh, and the caveat there is, have you ever gone to Yelp and you read a review and you go, well, they had words, but they really didn't say anything. You know, those aren't the kind of, of things I want to see in a social proof section. I want to see that you help Nancy and Joe get the house of their dreams and they had one or two key takeaways about their experience of working with you or something that stood out that made you so much different than the last time they bought a house. Those are the kind of things. And you don't need a lot of them. Don't, don't go overboard. Two or three of those that are solid seal the deal. Okay? Yeah. Um, I've seen people put 10, 11, 12, and I'm like, no one's going to read them. I, right. I want the, I want the two or three best and, and, and move on. I then love to have what's called a lead magnet, and that is a way for someone to get onto your email list without having to book a call today. So uh, in some business channels, that would be a white paper. In others, it's uh, maybe in real estate, it's you know top things for you to be aware of in this community that are highlights, that are uh, challenges you may encounter when you're... Southern California, for instance, here's top challenges you may you may encounter when trying to buy in Southern California that are maybe things you don't know from the outside, but you an agent essentially goes, you know, here's the things we're going to have to be aware of. Things take longer here and here's why those kind of things that you can share to help someone understand what's coming makes a huge difference because you're you're revealing information or sharing information before they've ever, you know, booked a call, showed up at an open house, met you in person kind of thing. Um, and then I want to make sure if all else fails, my calls to action are super clear. There is no question. Like that is my biggest thing. My whole, my whole take is you should never have more than two calls to action. I want to have a primary one. That's what is the most important way people are going to connect with me. Usually that schedule a call, it's, and it's book something, it's get, you know, come see me in the office, book a demo if you're in, uh, you know, that kind of, of idea. And then a second one being fill out a form and I'm going to follow up with you. Um, something you might do in real estate that I've done with some um, of my brick and mortar stores is to actually have one of those calls to action be a, a pop-up that has live connection, click now to talk to, to me, make a call immediately, but it only shows up during business hours. So, you know, by, by six or seven at night, it automatically shuts off. You know, the next day at 9am, it's going to go on again. And if someone's on your site, they can click that. And if they're on their mobile where 55 plus percent of all visits are going to be from, then they can click it. And immediately they're on with a call for you. There's no forms in the way. There's no nothing. It's, you know, two clicks and, and, you're answering the phone for them. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, as people are listening to this and, um, 
you know, again, maybe they, they haven't built their, their website out and, you know, they're, they're ready to get started, but they're like, oh man, I have zero technical abilities. I, uh, have no design abilities. Uh, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, just some of the, the services and the things that people can do to, to, uh, get these sites built out for them. So there are a number of places, number of ways you can do this. Um, there are services like Squarespace that you can build your own. There's Wix uh, where you can build your own. I can tell you that Wix has some challenges when it comes to Google SEO. Uh, and until they fix those, it's difficult to say Wix is going to be your best answer. If you're wanting to do it yourself, Squarespace is a great solution. Uh, I'm a WordPress developer, have been for 15 years. Uh, so I spent a lot of time in WordPress. WordPress, if you don't mind getting into the weeds, WordPress can build you a super powerful website. It powers a good portion of the websites globally. There are some things to be aware of with WordPress. So if if you're thinking, hey, I just need a site that functions for my business, it's only going to be two or three pages, I'd be looking at something like Squarespace if you want to do it yourself. Um, if you're thinking, hey, I don't want to think about it. I want someone to do all the lifting for me. Then I'd probably be looking for someone who's going to do a WordPress site for you um, or even maybe a show it site. But um, those would kind of be your options. Squarespace, WordPress and show it are the ones that you're going to have the best ability long term to make sure Google knows from your site who you are and all the connections get made properly. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, before I let you go, you got to tell me about uh, Distill Your Story and, you know, more about uh, more about your company. Yeah. So Distill Your Story is, as I mentioned at the beginning, because I came out of nonprofit space and story has been kind of it, something I've thought about a lot. Distill Your Story really is that I worked with a lot of business leaders and we'd sit across the table and I'd say, tell me what you do. And 10 minutes later, they're still talking. And I realized that in person, most people don't have that kind of patience. Online, they definitely don't. That if a business leader could share their story in 30 seconds or less, engagement went dramatically up. And if they could tell it even shorter than that, people's ability to remember it went up. And so Distill Your Story is a process where I sit down with business owners and I say, tell me the 10 minute version of what you do. Tell me all the connections and let's figure out what are the highlights that if we were just going to share a highlight reel the first time we connected with you online or through your social, um, even in your introduction at a public event, like in those first you know, 15 seconds, what would you share? And we figure out what that core message is. And then we figure out, great, now we know the message. How do we replicate that on a website? How do we replicate that in our media and marketing as a whole in some strategic ways so that that message is super clear and we become known as the person who solves this problem? So, um, you know, if people are listening to this and want to learn more, uh, learn from you and uh, get some more of these uh, great tips. Because, I mean, this this half hour that we were together, it filled full of actionable items that our uh, audience can get. Awesome. Uh, but w uh, where can where can people follow you at? Yeah, your best place is uh, you can find me at distillyourstory.com and online at Facebook. I am Story Distiller at uh, Instagram. I am Distiller. Distill your story. Nope. Yep. That's right. Sorry. Almost flipped those. Facebook is story distiller. Uh, Instagram is distill your story. Uh, and you can find information about what I do. And I post um, contents and educational stuff. And sometimes I break down websites and what's working and what's not. And from a messaging standpoint, those would be your best bets. Awesome. I really do appreciate it. And I think it's such an important topic because I think, you know, it's been interesting in the real estate industry over the last uh, several years, how important personal branding mm -hmm. has become. And, you know, all these things that, that we talked about really helps uh, drive home that personal brand for an agent. Yes, it does. And it's so important. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I really do appreciate you taking the time. Well, thank you so much, Michael. This has been great.
I want to thank Ryan for joining us today and sharing such clear tips for building a more engaging personal website. Remember, if you're interested in learning more, be sure to check out his website, distillyourstory.com. So once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an incredible story or real estate tips to share with our community, send us a message to feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode, but remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and we'll see you on the next episode.